Good morning, everyone. My name is Mr. Al Tucker. Um, it's glorious to be with y'all this morning. I um, had a wonderful weekend. Uh, actually, we, me and a few of the men went to um, see Andrew Womack this weekend at the, um, at the Men's Advance 2024 over there in um, Woodland Park, Colorado. And we are blessed with some good work again. You know, and I just thank God for allowing us just to be the girl there, just to be the fellowship one, one another. And, you know, and just fellowship with other men. We be see some see some strong men, see some strong men in the word in the word. I mean just that was a sight just to see how how, how that man just break down, start crying, and just giving himself to the Lord and just you know, just being you know, being on one accord with God, just doing what want to do with God, want to be want want to have want God and will in their lives. So, you know, it was a great We're back. I guess we all want to hear this part. I guess you did want to hear this part about me and me getting together. But yeah, we had a good time with that um, at, the, at the men's events. And um, thank God for just see, allowing me just to see how men come together and um, praise the Lord. Check it on. Y'all, it's going to be fine. It's freaking. Country living is just, mmm. Mm -mm. Anywho, um, yay for the men who went. I think, I, um, I know our overseer also got to go. So that was really great just for the men to get together. And I'm sure hubby will talk more about it uh, next Monday when it's Men's Monday. But yeah. No, go back. What do you say? <laughs> not good You're not going to talk about it? I'm probably sure I'm clean. Oh, sure. <laughs> Y'all, we am tired. This freaking time change. Who thought of this? What is this for? <sighs> okay, I'm so sleepy, so I pray, pray. Anywho, all right, stay focused. Yesterday, um, Minister Tomasa Easley revealed revelation that was straight from the throne of God about the anointing. It's not a long message. It is really condensed. But if you're wondering how the anointing works or how the benefit of it, um, it is a great message to go back and watch. Um, it's on Facebook. It's on probably on our page by now, definitely on our YouTube page. So check that out. I promise you, I assure you, it will bless you real, real good. She is brutally transparent in it. Um, about, <laughs> I guess I really didn't even notice that she doesn't use the word, or prior to this revelation, she didn't even use the word, the word anointing because it's one of those things that it was just kind of like, okay, well, what do we do now? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so go watch it. I can't even explain the revelation that came, but um, it was powerful and it um, has really blessed all of us who heard it. And it just really speaks to how when God calls you to do something, our first thought is, uh, how am I going to do that? Well, how, how, what now? I don't have money for that or I can't do that or whatever. You know, whatever your response is, because God always calls you to something that's bigger than you. And so just how the anointing brings in the provision that you need. So please watch that um, whenever you get a moment. Also, um, Wednesday, we will have Bible study at 630 Central Time. I believe that's going to be Pastor Kendra. And then on Saturday, we will have our prayer call, which is always at 10 a.m. on Central Center Time. And we've been praying for an extended amount of time, praying in the spirit every day for an extended amount of time. So Saturdays, that call can run a little long, possibly about an hour. But I am not apologizing for that. It's not my prayer call. I'm misled by uh, Minister 
Kimberly Martin, but listen, I was telling hubby last night, I was like, when I was sinning, I was faithful to it and didn't mind how long I was, I was uh, doing it. So, <laughs> you yes, we can hear you reading. Um, so yeah, so it's an extended prayer call, but it was powerful and there was some great revelation that comes out of it. Your hawk is that. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, what else? And then Sunday, Sunday um, at 9 a.m., um, the disciples, the discipleship class has graduation. So we are super excited about that. I believe there's 11 of them, and I think two of them are virtual. So, see, you could be in the discipleship class. But what you doing? Yeah, so uh, nine of them in person and two of them are virtual. So they uh, graduate on Sunday. So we are super, super excited about that. Um, and forgive me, honor to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton, and honor to our overseer, Dr. Caesar Richburg. We love you and we love our church family, Pursue First Presence Ministries. On Saturday, <laughs> March 16th at 9 a.m., the men will have a prayer breakfast for them, by them. We ain't invited y'all. But, I'm um, sorry, excuse me. Uh, but they're going to have fun. They are meeting at the church at 806 Meadowlark Lane in Goodlesville, Tennessee. You don't have to pay for anything. Just come hungry. Come hungry physically and spiritually so that you can be fed. Send your husband out, send your boo out, send your boys, send them to 806 Meadowlark. They're not going to be there all day because you may not believe in that. So they're going <laughs> to get in, say a little word or two over you, um, have some good food, and, and send you on your merry way. And they're going to have some fruit as well, Pastor Kendra, so they can eat healthy. Bless the Lord. Uh, but yes, the men's prayer breakfast, Saturday, March 16th, the first ever. So super excited about the men getting together. What else? I didn't cover your name. Oh, uh, Friday is the last day to pay for <laughs> the Hallelujah Tour. Dr. Lori, help me. I think it's called the Hallelujah Tour that is coming to Nashville on April the 7th. Uh, the women are going. It's just a little outing for us. And so I believe the tickets are $80. You can pay it on Giveify. But Friday is the last day to do that so we can order all the tickets at the same time and sit together and key, key, key together. But it is the Hallelujah Tour. I could name the people that was on there, but you don't want that. All I remember is I think Jonathan McReynolds. That's who I want to see. So. But okay, anything else? What else are we doing? March got a lot going on. I think it's good for March. Plus, Palm Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, mm. yeah. Easter egg hunt. The kids oh, are having sure. an Easter egg hunt on Saturday before Easter. Uh, March the 30th from 10 to noon is the Easter egg hunt. Please stop doing that, no. sugar. I'm talking about you know, the girls got the, when, when, when do they get the concert? Is that more true? What girls? The little girls, they're doing the dance thing. That's Easter Sunday. Okay, all right. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, <gasps> hey, that's serious, bro. Um, but yeah, for the Easter, the Easter egg hunt on that Saturday, you do need to register for that. So I'm sure someone's going to give me some more information on registering for that. But again, that's not until March the 30th, the Saturday before um, Easter. And that's going to be at the church from 10 to noon. But um, we want you to register so we know how many kids to expect. And so we plan accordingly. And I think it's 13 and under, I think is what they said. You know, we'll be halfway listening because we ain't got no little kids. <laughs> But we, we love them, though. I just be, like, tuned out. Like, they got nothing to do with me. I'm sorry. But bless the little kids. We have a lot of little kids at church. And then, you know, here come baby Mallory. Soon and very soon. So, yay for the kids. Okay. That's all the announcements. I feel like I'm at church on Sunday with the thing. Anything else? Bring it. Bring it. Okay. What are we talking about today? Uh -huh. You want me to sing it? <laughs> no, no. I do know now. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Friends, <laughs> mm -mm -mm. how many of us have them? Friends, y'all know that. Mm -mm. Ones we can depend on. Friends, 
side pastor that is not a church song that is Houdini, circa 1980-something. Friends. Well, bless the Lord. Um, yes, this morning we talk, we talk about friends. and um, I can talk about God for you, some of friends that hold you accountable. So, um, if you recall, if, well, all y'all Bible scholars, y'all know that David, when David was going, when Saul was trying to kill David, one of David's best friends was, his, was Saul's son, Jonathan. You know, and Jonathan, even, he even went, I mean, he went beyond the least because he, you know, Jonathan would have been the next in, in line for the kingdom, but, you know, um, but because of his, what, what Saul had done, you know, God had stripped the kingdom away from him. The kingship away from their family, you know, he gave it to David. And, um, and so, in, in this time, you know, and Saul had got a little jealous because, you know, they, they, I know y'all know the song, you know, they, 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 they Saul killed a thousand, but David killed ten thousand. So, you know, and, um, I think, you know, he was, I won't feel him David right now, you know, he was trying to kill David, but Saul, but 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 David's best friend was, it was Saul's son, Jonathan. And even when David was in hiding, Jonathan went out and you know, just tried to encourage him in the Lord. So the scripture for the day is coming from um, second, first Samuel chapter 23, verse 16. And it says, Jonathan went to find David and encourage him to stay strong in his faith in God. Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think he loves that story because you may have to preach that because that does something to yourself. But okay, so we're talking about friends. And as Happy said, godly friends. Do y'all want me to sing Houdini again? Okay, no. All right. Um, that's a good song. Um, but first, why do we need them? I don't need no friends. I'm good. I'm great. I got this. I don't need no friends. They try friends. Blah, blah, blah. I hear you. <laughs> I hear all of that because I have said that myself. I'm self-sufficient, independent. I'm not with no whole lot of kiki can. Go ahead on. I got this. Crazy. Okay. But the reason why you need them, number one, last night, hubby and I were talking about only children because we each have one child. However, our, our the bonus daughter has siblings, but I still I was telling her, but she still sometimes moves like an only child because she's his only child. So she, she's used to. <laughs> put, put it together, what's going on? She may have siblings that we know not of, but <laughs> she is. She moves as an only child, and my baby, bless her heart, moves as an only child. And so I was telling, we talk about it a lot because I love how they think. I love how they move. And I just, I love birth order anyway. Um, there was so much about that biblically, about your place in the family. There are certain things that are assigned to it. But only children move differently. And one of the things that they do is they stay in their head a lot. Because you have to think when they were younger, they didn't have siblings to play with and they were surrounded by adults. So they had to pretty much self-soothe and self-entertain. So they have a lot of head conversation that they just kind of can reason some things all together on their own in their head with only children because hubby was like well how do you get them to not do that and i said you have they have to trust you and you have to ask to be invited into what they're thinking what are you thinking about what do you think about that and really listen as they unpack that now most of the time you're like how did you get all of that out of that? <laughs> but think about it in your own life. If you have something going on and you're just mulling that thing over and you're thinking about it over and over again, I could do this. 
well, what if I do this and this happens? Or I could do this. Well, maybe I should do this. Well, if I do this, then what happens with that? If you keep mulling it over in your head and you never share that knowledge with someone you trust and someone you love, you can be on a pattern of negative thinking that has you completely thrown off and completely disconnected from the reality of the situation. So having a godly friend interrupts the negative thought patterns that some of us may have from time to time. We all have it. We all have um, things that we think negatively about or we think a certain way about, but they're not rooted in reality. They're rooted in just how we think about them. Well, um, and I have had to learn, I'm not the only child, I'm the youngest, but I've had to learn this a lot with my husband because if something happens or he does something, in my mind I'm thinking, now you know what he did. And the Lord would say to me, he still does, he'll say, go tell your husband or tell him what you're thinking. And I'm like, he already knows. He's like, he does not. He cannot read your mind. So you have to tell him what you're thinking. Nine times out of 10, he will say, that is not what I meant. I don't even know how you got that out of there. <laughs> and he's like, no, when I said that, I meant this. But if I don't ever invite him into the conversation that's going on up here, then I go off angry, confused, upset about something that's not even what it appears to be. Does that make sense? So having a godly friend, most of us is our siblings, but if you're an only child, who you telling? Your mama, your grandma? You know what I'm saying? You don't have someone um, who can come alongside Jonathan and David and say, listen, come let us reason together. Let's think about that. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what's on your mind. Oh God, that's not like that at all. It happens to all of us. And I say all the time that the enemy sometimes will have a field day with your mind before you ever sin, before you ever act out. There's a thought in your mind that's thrown. And if you don't bring that thought to someone and say, this is how I'm thinking, then you're negative. Do you see these deer in our backyard? <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> it's okay, Shonda. It's okay. Bless the Lord. Um, I this country living. It's so bad. Um, <laughs> but if <laughs> you, you have to have... That's a perfect example. I hate deer with a passion. Hate them. Hate them. Because I grew up in the country that was always tearing up somebody's car. There's a whole four of them in our backyard right now. My, I don't even have a fear of them. I just don't care for them. It's not rooted. That's not sound thinking. It ain't like they're going to come charge the house. Nothing like that. It's just I don't care for them. But I have to constantly talk about that so that it's not a thing because driving home i'm gonna see a deer so what do you do stop and have a meltdown no you heavy there's deer on the side of the road he's like <laughs> keep driving you're fine it's okay it's fine so having those godly friends having those people in your life help interrupt your thought patterns i was telling hubby last night that when um I would hear on the news, I don't watch the news anymore, but when I would hear on the news that someone had committed suicide or hear about someone committing suicide, I would say they got some bad information. They got some bad information, they had some wrong thinking that for whatever reason, no one was available to interrupt the pattern. If you came up to someone right now and said, hey, I think I'm thinking about hurting myself, the first thing they would start doing would be to start talking to you. They wouldn't just drag you off and take you to the hospital. They would have a conversation with you. They would try to see where your mind was and then interrupt that negative pattern of thinking. So that is one of the reasons why God places godly friends in our lives to interrupt stinking thinking and negative thought patterns that we have. Anything on that one? Big man. Um, like you see, you know, sometimes we get in our own heads and our own mind. If you think of the thing and all enough, you gonna, you you got your own conclusion how to be. And sometimes you need somebody to break the cycle. See, see, I got, I got, I got, you know, I had brothers and sisters go around here. Even now, I mean, we grown. We grown grown and we still have conversation. Me and my brother sometimes we, we get on the phone and um get talking about things 
and, and, and they correct me, I correct and I and I try to correct them. So it's no, bro. You you, you, know, you think this you think this is the wrong way. And you know, a lot of times, you know, we, I, I I had to we had to break down and say, how, how how would Jesus do? You know, me and my wife told me last night, you know, how you know some of the things we go through. It's, uh, and we, I guess we talk about she said we, about how we might get some disobedience in our life, whatever. And we try to figure out why, how we let stuff in to our bodies, how the devil get to affect us. You know, and then we, and, um, and sometimes we, we can't think about how we will. Did I, did I do disobedience? Did I, did I get some unforgiveness, some bitterness was one thing? And you check on the box. Well, I ain't got to do none of that, but how did it get in? And then I, I, you know, we, I used to say last night, it's a situation sometimes we have to think. I mean, we think we're doing right by our own, own mind and everything. But then I said we might have to think, though, think well, how would Jesus handle this situation? And then you think, well, he might have had a little bit different than what I did. So um, that's one of the things I could concentrate and think about. But like I said, you need people. You need friends in your life. And, and that's why I enjoy with my church family. Mm -hmm. and, um, and us men, we're trying to come together. But because cause women, they think of these. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love that, though, because see, when, when, if, if I happen to mess up and do something like quite right, my wife got, you know, she got, she got her, her church, her, her, her church family. They, I, I love the women because they, 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 they hold, but well, they got my back. <laughs> they like, no, he didn't mean it that way. So, hey, I thank y'all. Hey, but um, plus you need God and friends because sometimes you get, dis like I said, you get disrupted pattern because we get in our own head. We, we think we can think of some crazy stuff, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes they didn't have nothing to do with how that go. Even with so if, if I get upset, if she get upset with me, I get um, I'm upset with her. I might have to call somebody. Look, and they're like, man, no, man, you know your wife love you. She, 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 you need, then they big boy like they tell me you need to have a conversation with your wife because mm -hmm. they ain't where they should go. And, and, and so, <laughs> but most of the time I, I have my conversation with Lord. Lord, I know this your daughter, but she ain't acting right. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I try to have a conversation with Lori, but like I said, we need God and friends. We need people that can hold, actually hold us accountable for things we did, that we might get in our own way. Because like we, we as men and women, even men and women with God, sometimes we, we, we are on our worst enemies. We get in our own head and um, it's some bad stuff, which that thinking, that, that stinking thinking always happens to all of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you notice we keep saying godly friends because there's a difference between just some folks you grew up with and you had done life with or went to school with or played sports with or what have you. When we say godly friends, we are talking about friends who want you to win. Your winning, your succeeding doesn't diminish their value at all. They want the best for you. The second is they pray for you. They don't have to fix the situation. They don't have to know all the answers, but they're going to pray for you and point you back to God. Their advice is based on the word, not based on what they think, not based on what they heard. They are going to lovingly correct you and put you back on a path that leads you towards God. You, we're not talking about the friends that are like, yeah, girl, leave him because that's right. I want to put up with that. No, 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 no. That you need the friends that are just like, no, Shonda. Al is amazing. Let's let's pray because something's off here. Come, let us let us pray. Or or they even if I'm not open to that. Um, and our marriage is great, y'all. We just talking about life. That you know, <laughs> like <laughs> you live with somebody every single day after being alone for seven or eight years. It, you have to learn how to come together. So little stuff. Um, we try not to let little things fester. So we hold it ourselves accountable with our friends by saying hey I'm mad at him because of this or whatever and they do the same thing with us but a godly friend will lovingly point you back to the Lord um, I have a cousin who is more like a sister to me she is probably about 10 years older than me and um, my mom had arranged for us to go like on this girls retreat one time it was me and like two of my cousins and I think my sister was there and my mom. And we were just all just like sharing just stuff that had been happening and life that was lifing and just, you know, just coming together and bonding. And 
I remember I was really distressed about the situation that was happening in my life. And I was like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know how I can handle this or whatever. And my cousin, she might be on here, my cousin Lillian, um, she was like, what? Of course you can. What? What is wrong with you? Of course you can do that. You can do that. Oh my God. I mean, she was just so adamant, like, are you thrown? Like, of course you can do that. And I was telling hubby, I was like, at that moment, I still didn't believe that I could do it, but I believed that she believed that I could do it. And that was enough faith for me to step out because I thought if I get out here and I get confused, at least I can call her. At least she can be a resource for me. But she was so just blown away that I was even thinking that I couldn't handle something. And so one of the other reasons is that they see what you're missing. Sometimes when you're looking at yourself, you're looking at everything you did wrong, everything you said wrong, any way that you messed up. Your godly friends can see you winning. They can see the favor of God on you. They can encourage you and because they God gives them the ability to see you without seeing all the mess without seeing every negative thing that you ever did. The same way he looks at you. He's not looking at every mistake you ever made. He doesn't see those things anymore. They're covered by the blood of Jesus. When he sees you, he sees what his son did for you. All he sees is his, his son and that perfect sacrifice. So God will give you godly friends that give you the ability to see you better, to be able to see you blessed, to see you further. And sometimes you need to see what they see. I love when um, I may not be feeling the best or feel like I'm looking the best and, and my hubby will say, I got a beautiful wife. I'm like, I'm gonna pay you later. <laughs> You just need to, to hear that from somebody who loves you. And that is one of the things that godly friends do. So that's why you need them. Um, the second point was, uh, I hear a lot, and I used to say it my own self, is I don't trust people. <sighs> that is not serving you well. There are certain people who may have proven to be untrustworthy. Okay? That's them. That does not mean that you write off the whole human race as being untrustworthy. That is the enemy trying to isolate you. Okay? Because once he isolates you, he can have a field day with your mind. There are people who are trustworthy. When in the story of Jonathan and David, Jonathan is helping David despite his father. His own flesh and blood, his father is trying to kill his best friend and he's trying to run interference. He's not being disrespectful to his father, but he's saying, look, friend, I'm going to help cover you while, while this whole situation gets worked out. David had to trust that Jonathan had his best interest at heart, that he wasn't really just a decoy sent by his father to kill him, but that he really had his best interest at heart. Listen, ask God to show you who to trust. Ask God to place godly people in your life that you can trust. Um, people who are not going to tell your business, can't wait to hear what's going on in your life so they can go run down the street you know, or, or God will teach you what it looks like to have people in your life that you trust. Hopefully you trust your pastor. Hopefully you, you trust spiritual leaders at your church. But again, even in that trusting, you're asking God to show you how to do that. Because the truth is, are you trustworthy? Mm. Okay. All right. I'm just saying. But you have to... Stop, stop thinking that, that you can't trust anybody. There are people who, not everybody means you evil. There are people who just want to bless you. I remember when, um, I didn't even say who it is, but one of the ministers at church, when she first started coming around, she was like, why are y'all so nice? What's wrong with y'all? Why y'all act like <laughs> And we had to keep lovingly saying, there's nothing wrong with us. 
We don't want anything from you. We're trying to get something to you. We're trying to bless you. And some people, that's so foreign to them because they're so used to everybody around them taking. But God wants to send some people who give, some people who love, some people who just want to support you and have no ulterior motive. If you do not open yourself up to that, and this is my word, if you don't open yourself up to that, how are you ever going to be in a position to be a husband or be a wife? Oh, let me say a mouthful for it then. Because I was saying thinking that we as men, this, this ain't the men's baby, this much, but that's something that we had to work on a lot. I mean, we had to work on, because we got, I mean, we got people, you, we you, we all know people that, that say it all the time. I don't trust nobody. They say, the only thing with that is, you cannot live in this life, you cannot live in this world by yourself. And one thing I have learned to learn, if you can't trust nobody, you need to learn how to trust God. Because mm -hmm. once you learn how to trust God, God will send you God people that, that you can trust. Now, you still got to get the unharmed that heart. I mean, you, some of us just, well, I, some of us life would beat us down. The life we had, we had, we had, a, we had a rough go into that life. But, mm -hmm. you, yeah, because every day is not the same. Every day is not the same. Every day is not the same. You know, <laughs> I was, <laughs> me and my brother was talking one day. You know, it was um, in um, um, somebody was killing the killing himself, right? And like, and my, my oldest brother told me, "Do anybody up to yet that kill himself? You need to look into it. I ain't killing myself. I'm not killing myself. He's he's to the mom will be a better day." <laughs> it's a nice day. It might be rough on you today, but the mom will be a better day. So, I mean, just because you got to have somebody you be able to talk to, because even in that point. I mean, he never thought about killing himself. Not that I knew anyway. But I guess we, we, we as, a, as a as brother, we trust not, not trust each other enough that we can talk to each other about anything. I mean, that's that's and that we. I mean, far as me and my brother, we can't we talk to each other anything. So we have some hard conversations sometimes. Sometimes we might not we don't want to listen to what when, when they got to say at that time. But they ain't gonna leave us wrong because you know they cook one thing for because that's my brother. He loved me. He likes it, but you, you like we had. I got I guess I got some friends. That's probably as close to my brother's Yes, yeah. You know, when we had these hard conversations sometimes, there was, if you got a good friend, you can have them hard conversations with them. Mm -hmm. And then just for your friend, you can trust me. Like I said, you, sometimes you have to let, let a guard, they ain't let a guard though. You, you have to un, unharden your heart. You let them you unharden your heart and let people in. Because like I said, it's, it's, it's hard out here. You can't let her by yourself. Like I said, be you by yourself, like my wife said earlier, the devil will have a fear there with your mind. He will have you. <laughs> you know, you going crazy. Like, even think about when Jesus came off for the fan, the devil even tried to get him. I mean, try to quote scripture back to back to Jesus. And he, and like I said, all he had to do was make you doubt. Like we were saying, we were talking about it last night with Adam and Eve. I don't think the devil had to do was come and tell. All he had to do was just make her doubt what God said. Ask the question: Did God really say? Um, he specializes in introducing doubt into your mind. And so when you get into stinking thinking and you get into feeling like you can't trust anybody, that's from the enemy. Um, there Again, there are people who are not trustworthy. Thank God that you got that revelation and then move on. But what you're looking for, I have noticed the common denominator in my friends that are riders that have been my friends for years, that they, I see God in them. I see godly love, I see compassion, and I see um, just God's heart in them. So it is a tangible presentation of God's heart for me and God's love for me. Are they perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. But we're going to limp home together. We're going to cover each other. We're going to say, now, now we're going to figure this out. If you got a problem, I got a problem. My husband says all the time, if it's a concern for me, it's a concern for him. That is a thought pattern of a friend. We have got to be friends in order to have this relationship. Now, can trust be broken? Of course it can. But you've got to work to repair that. Is the relationship as a whole worth it to stay there and figure it out? If the Lord tells you this is not your friend and this is not a good relationship, okay, great. Then, then follow what the Lord says. But sometimes we're so ready to just be like, whatever. I knew, I knew they were gonna act right. I knew they were gonna do right. I knew, mm -mm, I knew it. <laughs> You're going to be alone, lonely, 
and frustrated if you don't learn how to be a godly friend. You have to be a friend to have a friend. So that means that not every discussion is always about you. That means that sometimes you just got to call your sister friend and just listen to her. Not just bring your stuff, but listen to her. Sometimes you got to reach out when you haven't heard from somebody. You know, I miss you. I haven't talked to you in a while. You good? What's going on? Those kind of things and genuinely listen and genuinely care or pray for people. Sometimes God will put certain people on your heart. Just pray for them. It may not be the time to call them, but just when you see them, sometimes I'll say, I was praying about you last week. Were you good? Everything good? And they're like, oh, God, thank you, because that was a rough week. So God puts you on people's heart and on their mind. Just ask him to show you how to be a friend and how to have a godly friend. But the distrust of everybody that is from the pits of hell. And so we just curse that spirit off of you and we decree and declare that you will have a willing and obedient heart, that you will be open to people that God is placing in your life. Because if you cannot learn to trust, you cannot, you cannot, one more time for the people in the back, you can <laughs> not have a successful relationship, marriage, whatever relationship, if you do not learn to trust. Okay. Amen. Um, what of God sees in Proverbs, um, I might quote it wrong, it says, to be to be a friend, you must be friendly. Mm. So be friendly people. I mean don't don't hold a grudge with everybody. Everybody, everybody 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 ain't made you bad. Everybody ain't 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 um behind your back and did something. Okay. What do we, um... Last thing was life wasn't meant to be lived alone. Even Jesus um, had the disciples with him. Even when he went to pray, he, he even took a group out of the group to go with him to pray. One of the reasons why life is not meant to be lived alone is because you have gifts and talents. Each of us has gifts and talents. If you don't share them with anyone, what is the purpose of having them? They just, they're just for you. He has put gifts and talents in your belly. There are so many things that I learned from my husband, so many things that I learned from my friends. It is, it's just a blessing to be able to share. And there are things that they learn from me that I'm just like, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm but I, I love that because they'll see things in you that you don't even see in yourself. So your gifts and talents will bless others and their gifts and talents will bless you. Plus, they help to cover you. Um, sometimes when I'm praying about something and it's really, really heavy or I'm too close to it to pray adequately, I will ask hubby to come pray with me. I'll send a, a, a message to some of my friends to just say, agree with me that, you know, X, Y, and Z. And then that coming together, that sharing of caring, whatever it is that you're trying to deal with, it just helps you because it's easier for two. How can two walk together unless they agree? So it will bless you to have someone to share the load with. Um, your friends will encourage you. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, we all have moments that life gets the life in and it can be heavy and chaotic. But when you have friends who come alongside and say, they cheer you on. It's, it's no different than being in a race or in a marathon. The people on the, on the sidelines cheering you on. Even the word of God says that we have a great cloud of witnesses who are cheering us on. And so we need that. We all need that in our life for people to come alongside and cheer us on. And then the last thing is that God wants to bless you to be a blessing. To be a blessing to your friends. So that is a mutual um, interaction. Everyone doesn't love on the same level. So it's not like, well, I took you out last week, so you got to take me out this week. It's not that. It is not that kind of relationship. It is just thinking about them and covering them and wanting good things for them and them doing the same for you. So that's why we need friends. Hey, man, if everybody, everybody needs an encouraging word. No matter where you're in the Lord, you still need an encouraging word with somebody sometimes. I mean, it's good to have some people come around and just encourage you. To be, to be to be a better version of yourself. I mean, that's why I thank God for my wife. Cause we we chill for each other, and she she wants to see the best. She wants she she want me to be the best man of God I could be, and she, I, I want her to be the best woman of God she can be. And so we encourage each other all the time, and we pray for each other. But well, we we, we pray for all y'all. We, we pray for our church family. We, we pray for everybody. That, 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 that we do. <laughs> but um, like I said, we just want to encourage you to be 
just be encouraged with somebody else. Like, you, like I said, everybody needs encouragement. You don't know, you might see them, you might kiss them at the time when they're down and, look, and give them an encouraging word. And then what friends do. Um, I got a few creeds that we're going to read over, but I saw some, um, what, what, what's the church? KB Media, KB Faith Apparel. Is, is I'm right? The hoodies we had on, is any KB Media Faith Apparel where we get them from? KBFaithApparel.com. Okay. Well, I know some of our church members up here. If y'all just put in the chat for they can get some of this lovely well we got. Pastor Kevin, hooking us up. Okay. And, and let me just say this. One of the things that I love about Pastor Kevin's, um, first of all, we're supporting him because he's a pastor and we love him, but the, the apparel is ridiculously quality. Um, he... <laughs> in his only child way is, <laughs> is detailed about the quality so I've never we I think every time he's got a shirt on we buy it uh, because we like his creativity but the quality of them I mean these are quality hoodies they're warm uh, we wash them and they don't shrink up or draw up they don't have little beady balls on them and all that kind of stuff they're good quality um, apparel so that matters to me because I would not be supporting it <laughs> not, but the t-shirts, the shirts, whatever, he really puts attention to detail, like little things are on the sleeve, um, some of them have scriptures on the sleeve, and they always get attention, like we wear them when we go to the airport or whenever we're traveling, and I think every single time we wear something of his, someone stops us, so um, we had on uh, shirts yesterday that said Jesus, and then in the middle of Jesus, it, it had there's power in the name. Lord, we brought them to this restaurant last night. I was like, hey, y'all, hey. Black sweatshirts, black sweatshirts. Where are you get a shirt for? Black sweatshirts. We're like, calm down. But yes, <laughs> so KB Faith Apparel. Somebody's going to put it in the comments, and uh, he'll hook you up real good. Okay. Um, got a few decrees on being friendly. It said, I decree Jesus Christ is my primary friend who is closer than a brother. He's a friend of sinners and has drawn me to himself as his very own. I decree my friend Jesus will not condemn me or judge me. He's always with me. I decree I acquire friends and they love me. They are gifts in my life. I forgive them easily when they make mistakes or fail me. I love my friends that God has gifted me with. I decree by faith I receive greater grace to be a good friend at all times. I decree my friendships from the past that were destroyed or broken will be restored in perfect love. I decree and declare that I am growing stronger and by faith I decree that new friendships are being strengthened and established in my life. I decree and declare that I generously sow love, loyalty, steadfastness, and kindness into others and therefore I reap friendships that are loving, loyal, steadfast, and kind. I decree and declare that I'm blessed beyond measure with wonderful life-giving friends in my life. I decree and declare that my friends are honorable and always show regard and honor to me and to each other. I decree and declare that my friends are not quarrelsome, but are very kind, honest, and gentle towards me. All right. And I was also hearing earlier, if you have a friend who has hurt you or you've hurt them, just pray and forgive and then cast the care of that thing over onto Jesus because God is bringing some new friends into your life and establishing some old friendships that for whatever reason, the enemy got in there and created chaos, okay? Um, this uh, decrees and uh, declarations is from 31 Decrees of Blessings for Your Life from Patricia King. So it's got a lot of different topics to decree and declare about. Valerie Wright, you are the bomb. Thank you so much for putting that in there. But check out Pastor Kevin. He can also design um, shirts. So um, if there's something that you want um, designed like for a family reunion or something like that, he can do that. And again, they are quality. So don't don't come with the $5 for each shirt because that's not happening. All right. Um, just saying. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. All right. We're going to pray and then let you all get back to your week. And again, to have a friend, be a friend, be a better friend. To my friends on here, I'm going to do better. <laughs> Just
I'm doing the best I can. No, sure. um, but yes, let's just make a commitment to be a better friend. Be a friend of God. Mm, it to God. <laughs> Amen. Be a friend to your spouse. Can we be friends? This is my friend. I love him, but he is also my friend. Best friend. Best friend. Now, does he get my name? Yes. Mm. But still a good friend. Hey, friend. <laughs> You're my boyfriend. He hates that. I'm your boyfriend. I'm your husband. I'm like, babe, you're all of that. Okay, that's weird. She will cook cooking this. Yeah, Baba Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us. Allowing us this time, Father God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Father God. Father God, we adore you, Father God. We we honor you, Father God. We glorify you, dear Lord. So without you, Father God, there is no us, Father God. So thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing the men and women of God just be able to come and share your word this day, Father God. And thank you for everybody who's on, Father God, who listens to your word. Not even the ones that can come back and listen later, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, your word for us today only is just, just be friends, Father God. Be friendly to one another, Father God. Father God, your word said that other than be a friend, you must be friendly, Father God. So thank you, Father God. Thank you for Open it. So for, thank you for just unhardening our hearts, Father God. Yes. And yeah. turning our hearts into, from that heart of stone to the heart of flesh, Father God. But we can accept people in our lives, Father God. Father God, show us how to be friends to each. Show us how to be friends to others, Father God. To, to show us how to be friends to each other, Father God. I mean, good, good godly friends, Father God. Yes. Father God, we, show us how to get some courage in Father God, give them words when they need them, Father God. But also show them how to give us words when we need them, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we're going to thank you for God and friends, Father God. And right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, in a sin we might have, Father God, we just give back to you, give, give you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. So, Father God, I just thank you for always forgiving us for our sins, Father God. Father God, show, continue to show us how to forgive others, Father God. For your word also says, Father God, in all the gains forgiveness, you got to give forgiveness, Father God. So, Father God, let us be forgiven to one another, Father God. And Father God, just continue to keep us close and in your word, Father God, for that we can be good friends to one another, Father God. Father God, we just want to honor and praise you in everything we do, Father God. We want to honor and praise you how we live, Father God. Let us not live not, not by our will, Father God, but by your will, Father God. And thank you for your will, Father God. Thank you for paving the way for, for, for on this day and every day, Father God. So, Father God, we hadn't invited you into our day. We just inv we invite you into our day right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Give us guidance, direction, Father God, the only you can give, Father God. Because without your direction, Father God, we will fail. So thank you, dear Lord, for all you do in our lives, what you're about to do. In Jesus' name. Father, I speak even now to the spirit of isolation. I speak to the spirit of depression. I speak to the spirit of trauma. I speak to any spirits of unforgiveness. In the name of Jesus, I break their stronghold over your life. And I decree and declare that as Jesus Christ is, so are you in this world, healthy, healed, and whole. I decree and declare that for a heart of stone, God is giving you a heart of flesh, that you are open to receiving and giving giving love. I thank you, Father God, that you're teaching us how to trust. I thank you, Father God, for showing us examples of godly friends and how to be a godly friend. Father, a friend loveth at all times, and there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I thank you, Father God, for placing godly friends in our lives, God, who are closer than family. I thank you, Father God, that it is not the skin that makes us kin, but it is the sin. I thank you, Father God, for teaching us how to come together to be one body, one family, God. Father God, how we are adopted and engrafted into your family, Father God, and how you're teaching us, Father God, how to love others, God, how to be loving and lovable. I thank you, Father God, for just teaching us more and more about friendship. I thank you, Father God, for teaching us how God is a friend to us and how he comes alongside us and supports us and cheers us on and helps us, God. I thank you for him being our example for all things. God, 
God, just teach us how to walk worthy of the calling that you placed upon us. Some of us are called to be godly friends, God. So show us, God, how to live in ways that are honorable and pleasing to you. Help us to be good stewards of the people that you placed in our lives as friends and family. Teach us, Father God, how to trust you in all things. God, order our steps as we go throughout this day and throughout this week. God, go ahead of us, God. Make every crooked path straight, God. Give us supernatural favor with you and with man. God, set before us open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. God, for every care, for every worry, God, we live a carefree life because according to 1 Peter 5 and 7, we cast every one of our cares over unto you because you care for us. God, we lack nothing. Yet a double shire. We lack nothing because you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. God, I thank you for meeting every one of our needs according to your riches and glory. I thank you, Father God, for not just blessing us with what we need, God, but in that we want. I thank you, Father God, for showing yourself strong on our behalf. I thank you, Father God, that healing is the children's bread. I decree and we in this world, healthy, healed, and whole. From the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, I call every organ to function in the full capacity that God created it to function. I evict cancer from your body. I evict tumors. I evict high blood pressure. I evict kidney disease. I evict any trauma that has taken up residence in your body. I curse the spirit of grief over you. I curse the spirit of sadness and loss. I decree and declare that the joy of the Lord is your strength. From this day forward, God sent us on assignment to decree and declare that your best days begin now it is so in jesus name now god this prayer isn't perfect but your love for us is so whatever it is that we should be mentioning whatever it is we should be holding up on behalf of these your people we decree and declare that it's done and it is done well in the matchless name of jesus we pray Amen. Amen. Listen, Amen. God bless you as you go throughout your day and throughout your week. Again, we give honor to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. We give honor to our church family, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries, and we give honor to our, our overseer, Dr. Caesar Richburg. And we give honor to each of you. You're not watching this by accident or by coincidence. God wants you to be a godly friend and to have godly friends, okay? If this blessed you, put amen in the comments. If you're looking for an opportunity to sow, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries is good ground to sow into. Not because we desire a gift, but we desire fruit that may abound on your account. Listen, we love you with the love of God. You can't do nothing about it, but love us back. We're going to go through here and pray over every one of you. If there's something specific that we need to be praying about, please put it in the comments or either inbox us. Know that we love you. Know that we're praying for you. Know that we consider you all friends. And we Amen. are believing God for some great things in every area of your life. We love you.